if you want to know what happens when you're too good of a sports PT, uh, then you need to tune into this episode. Uh, before. This episode uh, before I go on to the podcast, what is new in life? Uh, what is uh, <laughs> What is uh, better? What's the positive focus? Um, there's always things happening in my life, and I'll, I'll share a couple of things. Um, but um, the most recent one is my daughter, um, who uh, <laughs> told me uh, I was annoying yesterday. That was um, that was new. Um, and I asked where she learned that. And I guess she watched the movie with my wife, and somebody had mentioned that same phrase. And my daughter put it into context and um she got me to uh that was definitely what wasn't what i was expecting so um <laughs> that that's better with uh with my daughter um with my son uh jacob uh, he's doing awesome uh he's crushing his running at the moment he's not just walking but he is sprinting uh zach is doing awesome uh just being more logical than ever um he is questioning why things happen uh, and why what I say should go uh, when he's thinking that his ways um, should work uh, equally as well. So um, always struggling with that. Um, other than that, uh, I am beat up. I am beat up. My calf has been just bugging me. So um, I have been on the injured reserve uh, with running. So I, I'm i trying to work around how I'm going to prep for Murph. Uh, this year, you guys know I'm a, I enjoy CrossFit. So Murph has always been a, a, a very fun challenge. Um, so I'm trying to work around some strategies there. So, all right, um, on to this podcast. Why is being too good of a sports PT a problem? Um, it is a problem. It is a challenge. And um, why am I talking about this? Because uh, this came up on a um, on a mentorship call that I had with somebody recently, and I wrote a newsletter about it. But um, based on the feedback and all the questions I got, I wanted to share with you why this is such a big deal and um, to help you in your current thought process, like wherever you think you're uh, really good or you're, you're doing awesome. I'm going to help you understand where you can be, not where you are and where you think you should be. So let me let me help you with this. So uh, the question became, um, what I, I love treating um, athletes, but sometimes I feel like uh, they, they seem to get better fast and I just, I can't keep them. I can't keep them on my schedule. I want more athletes on my schedule. Um, what do you do? And, and the, that is a problem in that, um, yes, they do get better faster because they're motivated and, and they want to, you know, get back to it, all the sports or whatever it is. And your job as a PT, like you might be proud. I, I know there's a lot of PTs maybe on this call uh, or this podcast that, that say, you know, well, I can get people better in like one or two visits. And um, I mean, that's a phenomenal problem to have. Um, it is a phenomenal problem where people are like, I, I, I'm that good. I can get people better. And I think that's good. However, I think that the, po the problem it causes is two or three months down the line even up to a year where you don't even know it because you're the sports pt you're so proud of yourself like you just won the award you won the race but you fail to see like what's behind you and what's about to happen and um i'll explain that but the, the, it was based off of a call i had with somebody in the, the statement and um i'm gonna help you find solutions to um, not getting not delaying athletes uh, and their outcomes but um, if they are going to get better within two to three visits uh what, what can you do to solve the next challenge that you don't even know exists so that's what i'm talking about when you're too good of a sports pt now if you ask me how long does it take you to get people better um gosh, an entire lifetime. <laughs> That's not what people want to hear. But what I would say is, uh, it. I honestly, I feel I can get, I always go off of percentages and I always can get, um, I mean, it's a, if it's a chronic problem, well, complex, I mean, give me like three months, but if it's, um, pretty straightforward, uh, uh first, to third time uh, recurrent injury um, that's a non-surgical. I mean, that's, you know, 50% in two to three visits and 100% by six to eight. Um, I think we all live in that world. Um, George, who was on the, on, on the call said, you know, I feel like I live in the six to eight week mark where, you know, either insurances or, you know, patients or athletes are leaving or, you know, it's always in that world. And by six to eight, you should be able to get 90% improvement in outcomes. And in some cases, you might get 100% within two to three. So 
I want to give you some more arsenal, some more uh, tools in your tool bag, uh, toolbox, so that you can be more successful and and um, be able to uh, honestly have a bigger impact on the people you serve. So here we go. So first and foremost, um, I want to tell you that being a good sports PT is not just pain management. Um, and I'm very passionate about this. I had a call with somebody, um, Jenny, I think uh, asked this question. Um, we are a profession that is not progressive. Um, and, and what I mean by that, let me, let me qualify that. We are a profession where we get people out of holes. We get people out of injury. We get people out unstuck. That's really what we do. And um, what I mean by that is our profession only exists if people are in trouble, it, like in pain, and their quality of life has decreased. So our whole profession is based on if somebody has pain or not. Our entire profession, everything you do requires that somebody's in trouble, has pain, and it's limiting their life. So in theory, we don't help people baseline and beyond. So let me explain that. So if somebody has a quality of life of, you know, they enjoy playing with their kids, they play sports, blah, 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 and they get hurt, they're now in a, uh, a, in a, in a state where they are no longer happy, they're, they are no longer doing what they love, they have dropped from their baseline. Our job is to get them back to baseline. So you actually made no progress. You just got them back to where they were. Progress would be, can you get them beyond baseline into now improving their basketball uh, performance, improving their football performance, improving their running form or times. But your job is never to get them beyond baseline. So our whole profession has one premise, that somebody has dropped in quality of life or pain, and now we have to bring them back up. And to me, I love progress in life. And when I finally figured that out, it really challenged what I do as a professional. I was like, wait a minute. I'm only allowed to get you to like exactly where you were. I'm, my, my job is not progress. It's just to get you back. But what I want to do is I want to take you beyond baseline. Now, if you don't have the next step to be able to get them beyond baseline, then you'll always be in this position. And that's not a problem. If you want to be a, a pain physical therapist, brush it. I think that you're going to do phenomenal. There's another subset of intense people like myself who want to take beyond baseline to another level, meaning they don't want to just get that pitcher to get back to like being there for seven innings or whatever that is. There's other people who want to be able to get them back to seven innings and increase their speed, increase their performance, improve their ability to go nine innings, improve their ability to run four marathons a year. But you can't do that based on your current model, how you're practicing now. So let me explain. If you understand where I want you to go as a professional, where I think our entire profession can go, but there's so many hoops to jump through because PT school, CEU courses all feed baseline-based progression. Just get people to baseline. Let's just like just, just get them exactly where they were. If you want a baseline style performance, then then this podcast might be a little rough for you. If you're interested in going beyond baseline, let's party. Let's do this. So when you have a patient or athlete that you get better in two to three visits and you like are shouting on, out in the world, you, you go on Instagram, you post a story, man, I am the best PT on the planet. Nobody can do this. I got them two to three visits. Yeah, you got them to baseline. But what you don't understand, if you understand athletes, athletes need a lot of help. Um, in the pro world, I can tell you, I've lived it over the last decade. In the pro world, it's a multidisciplinary team. There's nutritionists, there's massage therapists, there's acupuncturists, there's physical therapists, there's PAs, there's surgeons, there's primary care physicians. There's so many disciplines involved. 
and every one of them has their specialty, right? And the way, the way, the reason why people get in pain is multifaceted, right? Is it because they haven't been eating well and their diet's uh, poor, they're not sleeping, um, they're not lifting weights, they don't have any form of strength, and they just go out and compete. And you as a physical therapist, you're like, oh, well, let me look at the knee, let me look at the shoulder, let me look at the mobilization, and that one thing is really going to help them. And you're like, yeah, I got them to help, but you got them to baseline. And re the reality is they need to control their sleep, they need to control their nutrition, they definitely need to work on strength so they're more resilient. Now, that's foundational work that requires an athlete to actually put in work behind the scenes so that way they're not continuing to see you for pain management. And so what you can understand is when it takes 10 different specialties and professions to help an elite athlete get to where they want to go, you have to ask, was it really that impairment that you corrected that really got them to go back to wherever they wanted in sport? No, it was one piece of the entire puzzle. And so when people say, well, I can get them better in two, three visits, I have to ask, <laughs> what else are they doing behind the scenes to make that two to three visits reproducible and scalable so that they can manage all athletes the same way? Can you do two to three visits with everybody? No. Why? Because there's so many ways that you can help somebody. And so when you say you, you, you help somebody with two or three visits, here's what you're failing to do. In an ideal world, if you can pick a, a pro athlete mindset, like how you're going to manage a pro athlete, and you bring it to, you know, um, uh, whoever it is in your community, Jerry, Jerry is a friend of yours, and you want to help him get rid of his knee pain so he can run marathons. Perfect. You got him better in two or three visits because you did this manual technique, this exercise with breathing and all, blah, blah, blah. And that was the thing that helped Jerry. But Jerry just likes to run. Jerry runs three to four marathons a year. Uh, he does no form of strength training. He doesn't even watch his diet. He sleeps four to five nights because he's stuck on media. Uh, and he works a very intensive job where he's um, walking and uh, standing for a long period of time throughout the day. With all that physical stress and improper recovery behind that, your magical two to three visits are only going to fix them for a short period of time. And you have to realize in four, six, eight weeks, 12 months, 18 months, Jerry's going to start to break down again. He's going to still stay with his bad form of strengthening, no injury prevention, nothing behind the scenes, no soft tissue work, no acupuncture, no visits to his primary care, cholesterol, blood pressure is all over the place. Uh, and he's going to continue to run uh, on, on very minimal fumes uh, to be able to run his marathons. And you're going to be the one to just pick him up right again and right bring him back to baseline and then let him go, you know, destroy himself. And so as a physical therapist, you have to realize, man, maybe I'm, I'm, that's a disservice. Maybe one of the first things that I can do is educate Jerry on like actually building out a strength routine. How about most importantly, teach him the importance of sleep, maybe direct them to work on nutrition with somebody. So he doesn't have to keep digging himself in a hole and adding physical stress when he has no recovery to bring him back to baseline. So all you're doing as a physical therapist, all you're simply doing is you're bringing him, all you're doing is waiting for him to fall again. But don't worry, Jerry, I'll catch you. I'll catch you whenever you're ready. And you pride yourself on that. But the reality is you're doing the disservice because there's so much more value you can bring to somebody. And if you can honestly do your dream job to Jerry, you know what you'd probably do? You'd build out six to nine months of strengthening and now, if they're a runner, they can still get strong. It doesn't have to be heavy load. It doesn't have to be heavy intensity. It just has to be added stress over time to make him more resilient. And maybe he has to cut down one marathon a year to improve his speeds for the other three. But that requires planning. That requires Jerry to like sit back and actually care about his body instead of the outcome of the performance. Actually look at how do I measure what, like, I, over the next decade, what that looks like. And so as you work with people and you say, Jerry, I know you have knee pain. I'm going to crush this knee pain in two or three visits. 
the reality is you're going to be coming to see me every three to four months. I, the physical therapist, have realized I thought I was good by getting you better in two or three visits. But if you're continuing to do this every four to six weeks, I'm not doing you any justice. I'm actually just contributing to the problem. So the best thing you can do right now is let's look at which marathons are most important to you. If I can work with you for the next year and I can get you to five marathons, but I got to back you down for one to make you more resilient, improve your performance, make sure that you don't have these hiccups that slow your speed down and question whether you're going to be able to do all four. So you're barely going, you're barely making it. But if I can back you off for one marathon and actually build you a program to look at all your flexibility, your strength, your stride, all your running mechanics, and I can build you up from the ground up and I can make you more resilient and you can be faster at your marathons, would that be something of interest so that way you don't have to keep missing out on potential marathons? That person might actually say, you actually you know what? Um, I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of having to do this every single time. Perfect. So I'm not going to be a normal sports PT. I'm going to be the sports PT who can take a step back, build you out a whole program, look and monitor your sleep, help you, direct you in the right place to get nutrition, partner and collaborate with other people who can help you with these things. And you know what the funny thing is? Those other professions can be the people who just dig them out of a hole. But what you are is now you're captaining, you're coaching, helping somebody realize what does a year look like? And helping them understand, you can go still get a massage, you can do the acupuncture, you can go to your local athletic trainer, you can go to your primary care. But what I'm going to do is I want to be your musculoskeletal, like captain, coach, whatever you want, a healthcare provider. Because I realize every single time you come in here every three months, I pride myself on those two or three visits, but I've realized you need more than that. And here's what I would get you to do. You spend one month with me. Two times this month and you work on a strength program, I'm going to send you all the information. Here's how many reps. Here's the sets. Here's how many times. You only have to do it four times a, um, a week. I'm actually going to start looking at your step counts. How much are you standing? How much are you sitting? And we can look at, man, you're just adding too much stress. You basically have no poor nutrition. You have no sleep. You're standing all day and you're running with no recovery on the back end. You're just a ticking time bomb for pain. And I don't like just treating pain. I actually want to improve your health. And that's why I say healthcare provider, because ultimately, I think that if we just work towards baseline, we help pain. That's a constant cycle, right? They just go to baseline, come back down, baseline, come back down. What if you get somebody to baseline and have them progress from there? And you see them intermittently. Now you just have check-ins and say, hey, in six, eight weeks, I'm going to see how your mechanics are doing. We can maybe do a little soft tissue, but just look at injury preventive exercises. How is your strength program? And from there, we just might make smaller tweaks. So now you're making progress with very little regression. So you have peaks, a small regression based on your tune-up and everything else that you did. Then you have uh, a high peak again, they go to the marathon. So you don't have these downward regressions, which most physical therapists pride themselves. They're like waiting for somebody to have a large regression. But what if you can actually prevent large regressions and have progression off of that progress? And all that from athletes get better fast, you're right, but they come back more frequently for regressions. So if you really want to be a progression-based performance physical therapist who can really bridge that gap between rehab and performance, you really can't do that. If you're saying you pride yourself on two or three visits, you had zero time to go to performance. So there's no way in two to three visits you're able to get them back to the gym, work on their programming and do everything else. So really you're just working on rehab to nothing. Rehab to rehab, rehab to rehab, rehab to rehab. It's just one cycle. So every time that you pride yourself on two to three visits, you're going back into the circle of regression, regression, regression. So all I can tell you is if you're getting the athletes better so quickly that you pride yourself on that, in two to three months, they'll come back. In six to eight months, they'll come back in regression-based states. So how about you get the athlete better in two or three visits, but you have a plan right behind that to work on progression so they don't have large regressions. That is where you should be. So there's not a problem with you being too good of a sports PT. 
But the problem becomes if you don't have a plan right after that. So let me tell you what the next problem exists. I would set it up is I would have, um, you know, a strength program or something designed off of whatever you want to get athletes to. When an athlete comes in to see you, one of the best things you can do is show them what like progression looks like within your clinic. And if they only know regression, that's all they know. But if they don't even know that something lies behind that, that gets you that gets you so much more of an ability to help them long term across their seasons, whatever it is. So you can help Jerry across four marathons, not just this one that you're going to dig him out of a hole. So if you can do this, what you'll end up doing is you'll build out a strength program. And then you have to have something right behind that. You have to have an injury prevention program. So they'll get them strong. And then they'll be like, oh, I've been doing my stuff. Ah, ah. You still have to work on like basic corrective exercise because there's flexibility and mobility that's going to take you weeks to months to years to be able to correct over time. So there's always something behind that. The base layer right underneath that is an injury prevention program. But you still have to have strength and strength and conditioning to make sure that they're resilient. So you always have to have, you're going you're gonna to meet people in pain-based regression uh, physical therapy. Then you're going to bring them over to a strength program that was designed for three to four months, whatever that is. And then you have to have an injury prevention program that's right kind of underneath that, supporting that. So um, that is what lies ahead of you as you go on to, to getting people better fast. The problem is you get them better fast, but you're going to see them more frequently over time. And that's what I'm saying. If you don't know what's about to hit you in six months or a year, you need to understand this is where, uh, you know, I think as as new physical therapists, we're excited to get people out of pain because that's what the profession tells us. I'm excited to get people out of pain and then on to the next. So I'd rather have more athletes on my schedule who I can get out of pain quickly, but I'm moving on to the next step with them. But what most physical therapists pride themselves on is they get them out of pain quickly and then they discharge them. That athlete is going to be back in three months. And if they're not back to see you, they're going to back to see somebody else. Why? Because they don't want to hurt your feelings. They're like, yeah, he got me out of pain, but it just keeps coming back. So I'm going to find a, a, a therapist who can help me understand like why it keeps coming back. So if you want to solve that problem of how do I keep it from coming back, there's your next challenge. So if you're if you're new to this and you're getting people pain, out of pain quickly, it's because you haven't seen them the second, third time for that same problem. And if you say you can solve that, I highly doubt that that athlete is as active. Now, if you're working with, you know, a general population, people call it gen pop. If you're working with gen pop, uh, then I think you won't have such a challenge. But if you're working, if you want to work with more um, elite, more athletic, more active uh, people who are motivated, they just keep challenging themselves with physical stress, community members who like love it. Uh, this is the next challenge behind you. So what happens when you're too good of a sports physical therapist? You have progression based uh, programs or stages for people right after that now if you're too good of a sports physical therapist you have to ask you have to be skeptical what am i not seeing what's like why are they getting better so quickly you have to see uh what you can't see what is what is the next problem they're going to come back and they're going to come back and they say they had it again so how do you stop that you have programs and everything else set up for them so that way they can actually start moving forward and not be a baseline pain management regression-based physical therapist. Now you are not progression. So um, I hope that helps. Um, this all came from, uh, I want to see more athletes, and they seemed to, to get better uh, too quickly. How do we get more athletes on the schedule? I think the question becomes, how do you get that athlete, not more athletes on your schedule, how do you get those same athletes to stay on your schedule with more progression-based uh, uh, programs and phases? That's the real route. Stop trying to look for more. How about the ones who are existing coming to see you? How do you take them to another level? That is what it's all about. So if you are uh, if you're stuck on the on the regression based um, treatment and you're like, I want to go progression based, uh, the next phase that people have challenged with is they can't design a strength and conditioning program. They can't design anything that's like baseline and, and above. And that's a skill-based challenge. There's some of us who don't who know how to do it. They just know how to offer it. There's some of us who don't even know how to get there and how to design a program. Either way, you're going to be stuck 
and you will always be stuck on baseline and below, which is regression and pain, regression and pain, regression and pain. If you want to go baseline and above, you have to be able to program. And that is why I created my strength and conditioning summit to be able to help physical therapists who want to be able to go baseline and above. Uh, you are you enjoy pain regression based treatment, but you love there, there's something more behind that. You're like, I just want to help my community more. I want them to do something better. I don't want this. I don't want them coming back for the same injury. That's when strength and conditioning programming goes to that next level. And if that is for you, you need to take my summit. Wherever, whenever you're listening to this, whatever stage you're in, whether you're you're a new grad, whether you're established, whether you've been practicing 37 years, it doesn't matter. At some point, you get sick of baseline. You're like, I want more. That's who this program's for. And so if you are, wherever you're listening to this, is 2023 <laughs> when it's recorded. Um, I, I host it June 10th and 11th. It's all virtual. Wherever you are in this country, uh, join me. Uh, it's a virtual uh, course. If you're in San Diego, come join me. I'm only putting five in the room. Um, but uh, come join me. I'll teach you all the fundamentals of strength conditioning, how to go baseline and beyond. And that will help you be able to help your community at a different level and not just be the uh, get out of pain in two to three visits and then you can start seeing them more frequently for the same problem. And so if you're looking for the long-term fix and not just the short-term short -term resolution, uh, this is the program, this is the thing for you. Uh, it's not the CSCS, it's not the whatever CEU course you've taken on strength conditioning. It's for physical therapists who want something different and can tailor it to their community and to the athletes that they serve. So I'm excited to see you then. Uh, I'm excited to see you uh, either virtually or in person, whatever you have, uh, but ultimately to make an impact on your professional career. That's what it's all about. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know, drchrisgarcia.com forward slash summit. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys on the next episode. I hope you guys are staying healthy and uh, absolutely crushing it in life. All right. See you guys next time.